Hi, this is Dan Malloy from Mechanical PE Exam Prep. Welcome back. Today we're working on a heat transfer problem. Let's dive in. The State Agricultural Commissioner has ordered that apples be quarantined and kept in cold storage for three months to kill suspected Mediterranean fruit fly larvae. The apples are brought in from the field at 80 degrees Fahrenheit and are placed into single layer trays with the fruit spaced out far enough that no apple affects another. The trays ride a slow conveyor which brings the apples into contact with 14.7 psi 10 degree air. Cooling is by natural convection only. When the apple cores reach 40 degrees, the apples are transferred to a cold fruit locker maintained at 40 degrees. And the apples can be assumed to be homogeneous 3.5 inch diameter spheres with the following properties. We have the conductivity, the film coefficient, the specific heat, and the thermal diffusivity. How long will it take for the apple centers to reach 40 degrees Fahrenheit? So I've drawn a little picture, my sad conveyor belt here, to try to frame out what's going on in this problem. So we have these apples in the field, and they're at 80 degrees Fahrenheit, because that's the ambient temperature outside, presumably. And they want to get them down to 40 degrees, and they're going to do that as fast as possible by exposing them to 10 degree air. Once the cores hit 40 degrees at the center, then they're cool enough, and they're just going to transfer them to a 40 degree cold fruit locker. So the question is how long does it take for the centers to get down to 40 degrees when they're in that 10 degree environment having been taken out of an 80 degree environment. And they place them on a tray spaced out far enough so there's no interaction between them and there's no force convection. This is a slow conveyor so it's not like you have some velocity of air blowing over the apple. It's just natural convection. The apple is literally just sitting there and, um, and being pushed across into this cold environment. And then they tell us that the apples can be treated as spheres that are three and a half inches in diameter. That's pretty much everything we know. And now I'm gonna just write down some of the assumptions. First assumption is that this is a transient cooling problem. And what I mean by that is it's not steady state heat transfer. So we care about the amount of time that it takes for the body to change temperature. Next assumption this is really given to us is that it's natural convection only. A lot of heat transfer problems for convection, whether it's natural or forced convection, involve finding the film coefficient H. Here it's given to us, so that gives us a bit of a steer on what kind of a problem this is gonna be. And the next assumption I'm gonna make is that the apple is gonna be treated as a distributed body, not a lumped. And that really comes back to this idea here that the apple can be treated as a three and a half inch diameter sphere with these properties. So you suppose you had like a hunk of metal and it would transmit the heat through it very quickly. Pretty much as soon as the outside part of it reached a certain temperature, that heat would be transferred to the middle and the middle would reach the same temperature very soon after. But because it's an apple, it doesn't have those same heat transfer properties. So it actually matters that it's a sphere and there's gonna be some temperature gradient from the outside to the inside, and the core is gonna be the last thing to reach temperature. So it's not, uh, not lumped, and I'm gonna prove that in the first step. And the last assumption is that the geometry is simple enough that we can use a graphical approach. Okay, so with those assumptions, let's outline the steps that we're gonna go through for the solution. First, we're gonna compute the BO number and show that it is greater than 0.1. Then we'll identify the transient heat flow chart that we want to use. And then we'll calculate the parameters we need to use that chart. And then we'll find the modified Fourier number on the chart. And lastly, that will allow us to solve for T, which is the time it takes for the apple centers to reach 40 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's the game plan. Okay, so the first step is finding the BO number. The BO number can be found on page 34.5, equation 34.16 in the MERM. And the formula is H L sub C over K, where H is the film coefficient, L is the characteristic length, and K is the conductivity. And we know H and K, and we can talk about how to find the characteristic length. But what's the meaning of the BO number? Why do we care about it? Well, it's sort of a comparison of the internal thermal resistance of a body and the external resistance. So 
If the BO number is small, that means that the body can be treated as uniform or lumped, which I mentioned earlier. Whereas if it's large, then that means we have to account for the geometry of the object. We have to treat it as a distributed object. And the number that we use as the comparison is 0.1. So if it's greater than 0.1, it's distributed. If it's less than 0.1, it can be treated as lumped, which is a nice simplification for a lot of problems. In this case, we're going to show that it's greater than 0.1 and that it's distributed so that we can't make those simplifying assumptions. But then there are these charts in the appendix that are somewhat simplifying. It's just a, a different approach that we have to take. Okay, so we know H and K. We don't know L sub C. That's the characteristic length. There's another formula on the previous page, 34.4 equation 34, 14. And different geometries have different characteristic lengths, but it's always true that for any geometry, the characteristic length is equal to the volume over the surface area. It's this ratio. So let's work that out for a sphere. LC for a sphere is going to be the volume of a sphere, which is 4 thirds pi r cubed and the surface area of a sphere is 4 pi r squared. So if you cancel out two r's with uh, r cubed and the pi's go away and the 4's go away, you end up with r over 3. So one third of the radius is the characteristic length for a sphere. So let's work out the characteristic length for the specific sphere that we're dealing with, our sphere has a radius of 3.5 inches, and we want to divide that, actually that's the diameter, three and a half inches, so we want to divide that by two to get the radius, and then we would want to divide it by three, because it's r over three, and then we also want it in feet because of the units that the other parameters are in, so I'm gonna multiply that by one foot over 12 inches, and after calculating, I get 0 0.0486 feet. So now we can bring that back up to the formula for the BO number. The film coefficient was given to us as 5.7 BTU hour foot squared degrees F and the characteristic length 0.0486 feet and the conductivity is 0.42 BTU foot over hour foot squared degrees F. So a lot of these units go away the film coefficient and the conductivity have basically the same units except the conducti conductivity has this extra length unit in here but that's going to cancel out with these feet and the rest goes away so the bo number is unitless and it's equal to i'm going to say it's approximately equal to because i'm rounding 0.66 and the point here being that that's greater than 0.1 which confirms our assumption that this body has to be treated as distributed not lumped. So we've confirmed the only assumption that we weren't completely sure about. Okay, so the last assumption that we made was that the geometry is simple enough such that a graphical approach is viable. So that's the next thing that we're going to do in step two is identify the transient heat flow chart that we're going to use to solve this problem. If you check out the appendix, specifically 34F, you'll find the transient heat flow charts. Specifically, the one uh, F is for solid sphere of radius R sub zero. And on that chart, there's actually six charts, the six mini charts, and they're broken out by different ratios of R to R sub zero. And we're interested in the one where R over R sub zero is zero. And why, what is that? So R is the radius, th there's a particular point that you care about. So suppose this problem had asked us about the outside of the apple or some position that is, you know, a third from the outer surface of the apple. Those would all have different amounts of time that it would take to reach 40 degrees. The last point to reach 40 degrees is going to be the absolute center because it's furthest from the outside where the air is. And that's the one we care about. R is the radial distance from the center. R sub zero is the total radius. So if we want the center, we want R over R sub zero equals zero for the center.
So that's the only chart we're going to look at. And now that we've identified that, our next step is to calculate the required parameters. So now it gets kind of specific to that chart. So I pulled an image. I wasn't able to get the actual image from the Merm, but I pulled one from um, just Googled this exact chart and I found something from a textbook. Unfortunately, it's from like 1955. So it's not exactly the same, but I think it'll do. Okay, so this chart calls for a couple different parameters. The first one is along the y-axis. It wants to know the final temperature or the ratio of the, of the final temperature. They call it T, but I'm going to call it T sub R because it's at the point we care about, which is at the center, minus the ambient temperature. So the, so the apple is being exposed to some T ambient, and they want the ratio of that to the initial temperature minus that ambient temperature. So in our particular situation, we want to know when the center has reached 40 degrees, uh, when it's exposed to an ambient temperature of 10 degrees, as opposed to the full range it could have made, which was from 80 originally minus 10. So that's 30 over 70, which is point, we'll call it about 0.43. So that's how we're going to look it up along the y-axis. And then along the x-axis, this is what we're looking for. I crossed this out because in the chart in the Merm, it's actually alpha t over r0 squared. So we know alpha, we know r0, we don't know t. So this is what we're looking to find. The other thing that we know is these sort of diagonal lines, which is k over hr. So that's the next parameter we're going to compute, k over hr. Now you'll notice this is kind of like the BO number. It's sort of a modified BO number, and it's modified in two ways. One way is that it's the reciprocal, because the BO number was h l over k. This is k over hr. Instead of the characteristic length, we're using the radius of the apple. So that's an important difference. Um, so this isn't, this isn't a variable or a spe special equation. This is just the parameter you need to find in order to use these charts. That's why I'm not referencing a particular equation number for these. Let's plug these in. I'm going to skip the units this time, and you'll trust that they work out similarly to on top. It's 0.42 divided by 5.7 for the film coefficient, and 3.5 is the diameter, so divide by 2 and then multiply by 1 over 12, I get 0.51 for that parameter. Okay, so now I've highlighted on this chart, we have a little more than 0.4 for this parameter on the y-axis, and just a touch more than 0.5 for this diagonal thing. So I identify this red point here, and if you follow that down, we get this thing on the bottom, which is kind of a modified Fourier number. We haven't talked about the Fourier number yet, but this is this parameter seems to equal, if I've spotted that red point well, about 0.3. So let's write that down. Alpha t over r sub 0 squared equals about 0.3. And now we know alpha, that's the thermal diff diffusivity, which was also given to us, and we know the radius. Also, this is the radius, right? So if you just pull this number out, that's about 0.146 feet. So we can use that down here. So let's solve this to isolate the time t, which we care about, 0.3 times r0 squared over alpha, which is 0.3 times 0.146 feet squared, and the thermal diffusivity is 0 0.0063, and that has units of feet squared per hour. And if we solve that, we get T time equals 1.015 hours, which is about 61 minutes. And that's it. That's how long it takes for the apple to reach 40 degrees at its core. And the only thing I would mention here is the Fourier number, which we really didn't use for this problem, but I think it's worth mentioning. It's another equation that you may just want to be aware of, so I'll jot it down. If you check out page 34-5, equation 34-19, you'll find this guy. Fourier equals alpha t over L sub c squared. 
So this is sort of like a relative time parameter. And you'll find that a lot of transient heat transfer problems will involve the BO number and the Fourier number used together in the same solution. But with these graphical solutions, it's less about the equations and more about whichever parameters happen to be on the axes to find what you need from what you have. So hopefully that helps. We'll do a lot of other heat transfer problems so that you can see different ways that the assumptions get tested and um, just kind of classifying what different types of problems are out there. I'll see you in the next video.